During the 1940s and 50s, there was a move across New Zealand to get more soil conservation work underway, and particularly poplar and willow planting on hill country. And the advantage of it is both poplars and willows can be taken out as a stick. There's no branches, no roots or anything else. They are planted about 750 millimetres in the ground and they'll grow. So it's much cheaper, more cost-effective way of getting them planted. The first poplars in Northland would have been some of the large cottonwoods or deltoides poplars. The other one that was planted is the Lombardy poplar, the very tall growing one, and they were planted up here as well. The next thing that happened in the mid-1970s, we uh, there was a rust, poplar rust blew over from Australia and over about a five year period an, a second one came in and all those Italian hybrids we'd, we were using were no longer available for um, soil conservation work. They were either dying or you couldn't grow them fast enough in the nursery or when you did plant them out they, we were getting heavy losses. Instead of getting a 90% strike we were only getting about a 10% strike. So, we had to give those away and new species had to be bred up. New clones of trees had to be bred up. Well, this is the um, Northern Regional Council's Flyger Road Poplar and Willow Nursery. Um, it's primarily been uh, placed here for soil conservation. We're this year looking to be doing about 6,003 metre poplar poles out of here and a number of willow poles and stakes. Um, we've been slowly building that. Um, we're looking to aim to eventually get to um, 15,000 by 2020. So this whole nursery I guess is just looking to build resilience in the Northland landscape in terms of soil conservation. I guess each one of these poles is a, a giant pin that works to hold the landscape together, uh, sending out roots through the soil, uh, binding and holding those so soils together. Um, and when you get those working together in a group, um, you've got quite a, an effective mechanical holding power with those root structures. Over the next three years, um, this nursery is looking to supply an MPI funded Hill Country Erosion Fund project in the Kuiper Harbour, um, supplying up to 3,500 um, three metre poplar poles for projects in, in the greater Kuiper Harbour catchment. The current varieties we're working with here have been, uh, I guess, bred and developed over the years to be, have better form and um, less management um, issues. Um, so we're looking to continue to work with the Poplars and Willow Research Trust to get new varieties here that will ultimately be less uh, maintenance and less susceptible to certain climactic conditions and as well as pests and diseases. In the past, I guess there's been a, a lack of emphasis on long-term management of these poles. Um, often they're just planted and forgotten about um, and then a few years down the line they become uh, I guess a burden on the landowner. Um, one thing the Northern Regional Council has been um, placing quite a bit of emphasis on is to ensure that um, upon receipt of these trees that the landowners um, are aware of their future obligations in terms of management ensuring these trees are um, basically carry out their original function. That didn't happen or didn't happen enough and with the result if you go out there now there's a lot of big trees that are not pruned, they're big and ugly and unstable because they've got too much top on them and they're starting to tip over and it's, it's a very costly problem to tidy up. Uh, it really does require an ongoing relationship between the people promoting the soil conservation and the landowners. They must get out there, talk about management, talk about uh, the end products and also talking about achieving the objective they were planted for in the first place, which was soil conservation. Pop poplars are pretty nice to fell, they're pretty clean wood if they're nice and young, but once they get you know, to a stage when their branches are everywhere and they get quite big, they, yeah, they can be quite tricky. If you didn't have machinery like we've got on site de dealing with them, it'd be near impossible. And we do a lot of poplar jobs, but majority of them uh, you know, we chip them for the, um, for the farmer's use, for the chip, for the um, calf standoffs, so it's really popular. We work with a lot of farmers, obviously with having large equipment, you know, can chip quite big diameter. Um, yeah, we get rid of farmers' trees that, you know, they don't want and they don't have to buy wood chip in, they, they, they get it from the job they're paying for, so it works, you know, they kill two birds with one stone. We run a dairy operation in Northland, 
We're milking about 550 cows in the split calving regime. Um, we're raising approximately 100 to 120 replacement heifers. Recently, uh, we've um, had to chop down poplars that were planted as part of a um, conservation program some years ago. Um, obviously, uh, calf bedding for us is quite a major expense. We spend in excess of $4,500 a year. So by utilising some of these poplar trees and chipping them, um, we've not only used the resource, but we've reduced a substantial cost um, to our budget. Um, we've used this chip for some years now and um, we find it very successful. Where do we go from here? Establishing this new nursery is a, is a great idea. It's going to be a, a matter of suck and see it for a while because we're, we're not sure which of these species that were probably bred in Palmerston North are going to do best in Northland and under different soil types. Um, so there'll be a bit of trial work to, uh, to see which ones are the best. Certainly ensuring that uh, trees that are planted, that the landowners know exactly why they've planted them that they plant the right trees in the right places and that there is some advice, ongoing advice, on management of those trees. And, you know, there are people who have grown them up here and exported them for timber. Um, they, theirs were, they were logs, they had selected amongst the trees they'd planted, they'd selected the ones with good form, had pruned them and um, they were being exported to China. Now that's a, a market that is available if, uh, if anyone wants to follow it up. With the amount of pine logs we sell overseas to all the, the foreign companies, I, I can't see why poplars are going to be much different. You know, maybe they won't be for building, but I'm sure there's plenty of other uses for wood. Because one, one of the problems is you've got trees at say 20, 30 metre spacings across a hillside, it gets costly to harvest. But certainly there are properties where there would be enough bulk there um, for biofuel, certainly. And uh, there is work being done in parts of Northland at the moment with um, looking at trees for biofuel. So at the end of the day, um, these old poplar trees are going to need to come down and uh, be managed and uh, I suppose trying to uh, utilise resources from, from that process as much as you can, trying to re recover some of those costs is the best way to go about it. And there are a few options around that. Um, the most ideal, in the most ideal situation, uh, exporting timber logs. Uh, if you've got enough quantity and uh, quality, you, you are able to, there's a market for that in China, exporting those logs, getting them off farm, um, not only are you recovering costs from that process, but you're, uh, you're getting residuals off farm that otherwise you just would have had to have cleaned up and uh, put, put costs back into cleaning that up. So that is a, uh, the, the, the ideal situation to, to clear some of these trees. So uh, where we are now, we've learned a great deal from past experiences, trials and errors, and uh, we've realised now that when planting these soil conservation trees, there needs to be a lot of thought put into uh, what the outcome of these trees will be. Uh, a lot of emphasis behind management of these trees and uh, also ideas around end, end uses, and what possible end uses you can get out of these trees. So not only utilising them for soil conservation, but also getting another, another resource out of that at the end of it. Um, and saying that, we, we need to, we can't forget uh, what they were planted for in the first place and that is uh, soil conservation with the idea to reduce sedimentation of the waterways and uh, improve water health within Northland.